Hi, welcome to another episode of Life After Mental Illness. I'm Bill McPhee, your recovery expert. My definition of, my definition of recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anyone else other than who you are today. In today's vlog, I talk about understanding your illness. I talk about why physical illness is different than mental illness, and I talk about uh, psychosis and back to reality and really understanding our illness as the enemy. You really must watch this video, it is really, really uh, informative. So that's what we're doing today. Tomorrow I'm going to be uh, doing a vlog and sharing with you a bunch of people that in the future we're going to be doing interviews. I'm going to be uh, doing interviews with different people uh, having to do with mental illness and everything like that. So tomorrow come back and we'll, I'll share a little bit about what's going to happen in the future as far as different interviews with different people and things like that. So have a, have a great day and remember recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anyone else other than who you are today. Come back tomorrow and remember there is life after mental illness. Have a great day. Hi, today we're talking about understanding your illness and that is the first first step to recovery. Um, basically when I teach the six pillars of recovery in my Bright Future program we would always start with understanding your illness. And I want to tell you that that's the first step and it's very, very important to understand your illness. And we say, well, why is it important to understand your illness? Well, here's why. If we look at our illness as our enemy that we have to fight to get a better quality of life, then that's where we have to start. The analogy is like war. If we were at war and we had an enemy, what would we want to know about our enemy? We'd want to know about their nuclear arsenal, their chemical weapons, their air force, their navy, uh, their land troops, the, all this kind of stuff, their air force. That's information about our enemy. We have to look at mental illness and as our enemy and how to fight it. So therefore, the very first step is trying to understand it. And a lot of times, it's hard to understand a, a mental illness because it affects the brain. And the brain is so much different than a, a regular body, our body organs. A lot of times people say, well, you know, they compare, well, mental illness is just like any other illness, a physical illness. You know, there's diabetes runs in families, a heart disease runs in families. Uh, cancer runs in families, mental illness runs in families. Exactly, that's true. But the big difference between mental illness and physical illness is that with our mental illness, the brain may be broken. And this is what happens when the brain is broken. If I was walking and I tripped and I fell, and I broke my leg and my bone was out of my skin and there was blood everywhere, my brain would say, Bill, you fell, you broke your leg, you have to get to the hospital and get it set and get a cast and let it looked after. That's fine, nobody would argue with that. However, why mental illness is different than, than um, physical illness is that our brain is broken and it doesn't know that it is sick. The brain when it's sick, the mind when it's sick, it, we, it can't understand that it's sick in itself. And I'll get to a letter in a little bit that will kind of show you what's going on. So, again, understanding your illness. Very, very important. So, let's talk a little bit about statistics. One out of five people will have a mental illness. And though that, that, that's huge. One out of five people. So, in the world today, there's, there's 50 million people in this world with schizophrenia. By the year 2020... Uh, depression is going to be the number one cause of disability next to heart disease and uh, cancer and all put together. It's rabid. You see, we see it in our society. Everybody can, you know, say I'm depressed or whatever. But when we are talking about illnesses, we have to understand them. For example, there's schizophrenia, schizoaffective, there's bipolar, bipolar 1, bipolar 2, 
there's depression, there's OCD, uh, there's uh, anxiety, uh, these things like that. So what do we need to do? How can we understand it? We need to understand it so we can kind of get insight into our illness. For example, we need to make it easy. We need to, because what happens, well, there's a trend today, there's a trend today for psychiatrists, for example, to say, or people will say, well, maybe we shouldn't label somebody with an illness, or maybe we should just say there it's a psychotic disorder or, or a break from reality and not really give that diagnosis. Well, you see, in my opinion, I believe that is wrong. I believe we do need to call something what it is so we can understand it, so we can learn. If, if our enemy doesn't have a name, how can we even research it to fight it? And that's very, very, you know, very, very important. So, for example, I'm trying to, when I teach, I try to make it simple for people to understand. For example, and it's, and, and, and it's really not, not rocket science, but for example, um, depression. A lot of people don't know that depression, if, will go away eventually by itself. But, here's the thing, you do not want to rely on that to say, I'm going to wait till my depression is over, because the illness of depression is so debilitating and so mind-rattling that you have thoughts of suicide and suicide comes in into the picture and before your depression goes away before untreated it may be too late because when you're in the midst of it it may be so bad that you take your own life so it's not good to leave depression untreated so we have to treat it we have to learn about it okay so for example um OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. A lot of times people think, oh, well, you know, you, you think about washing hands over and over or, uh, you know, things uh, people get repeated, like somebody, if they're driving a car, thinks that they hit somebody all the time and, and has to get out, you know, these are extreme cases. We know how Howie Mandel, you know, he never shakes anybody's hands because he has, has that OCD. But a lot of people don't understand it. But here's how to kind of understand a little bit of OCD. So, for example, it's a repetitive motion, right? People have to do repetitive, the very, very sequences, repetitive sequences. Well, how can we understand that? How can we understand it? Okay, here's how you understand it. Remember the old records, the old vinyl records on the turntable? Well, remember when they go around and you had a, a arm and a needle that would go in the groove. Well, what would happen with those vinyl records when they start to wear out, wear out, is that it would stay on the same groove and wouldn't move. So what happens? It repeats the song, it repeats the words over and over and over and over and over again. It's stuck. And that's exactly with our wiring in the brain with obsessive compulsive disorder. It's like a needle in the record player and it's stuck on some kind of groove in our mind and it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, it has to repeat. So that's a very simple explanation uh, or analogy of, of uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Let's take, for example, um, anxiety. Um, a lot of times people talk a lot about anxiety. Oh, what's anxiety? Or I have anxiety or so-and-so has anxiety problems or everybody's anxiety. But no one ever gives a definition or really is really vague what what uh, anxiety is. Well, I'm going to tell you what anxiety is. Anxiety is basically fear of the present and always worrying about the future. So if you look at yourself and you say to yourself, I'm always fearful. I'm always fearful in the present and I'm worrying about the future all the time. Now, that's the basics of anxiety but you have to remember the severity is in the degrees is in the degrees the weights that you put on those so when you look at fear of the present how much are from from zero to ten do you feel fear of the present like at an eight or a four or a six or a two and then do you worry about the future 
do you put weight on that? Is it, do you worry like at, at a level 9 from 0 to 10, at a level 9, a level 2? And that's what basically that, that's that understanding. So you probably didn't understand that before or look or see that it was made simple, right? And that's what recovery is all about, understanding our illness so we can, so we can uh, uh, battle it, so we can fight it, so it's our enemy. I want to read a letter that I got here, and I just want to comment that. It has something to do, do with that. So, for example, this woman writes to me, she says, My son has refused treatment for four years. He continues to deteriorate, believing in the dolphin will take care of him, but when dolphin leaves, he becomes very agitated. He believes his sister is the Antichrist because her name, Christy, first five letters spells Christ. Have you known anybody with these thoughts? He lives with me. He is 41 years, diagnosed at age 25 with paranoid schizophrenia. Well, obviously this person, you know, the symptoms of, of mental illness, one of them is being out of reality or having delusions. And, and, that. and this woman asked, have I heard of any other stories like this? Well, I got to tell you, we all have stories with this. Mental illness is a break from reality. Psychosis is a break from reality. And when we have delusional thoughts or false reference or false ideas, all these kind of stories come up. And these stories are developed because of coincidence that happens to us, because what's going on in mind, but paranoia, everything seems so real, all this kind of stuff. But... When a psychiatrist sees a person, you see, they don't really care about the story. They don't care about the, thinking that there's dolphins or there's an alien or that I can make time go backwards or that I'm involved in the CIA. All this kind of stuff is delusional thinking. The psychiatrists don't really care about the stories because what they want to do is they want to try to medicate so these symptoms go away, your positive symptoms go away, that the paranoia goes away, that the delusions go away, and you can start actually making sense of your life. Now, this person's gone treated for four years, doesn't accept treatment. The news is, unless there's treatment and treatment options, any psychotic medication, it's not as if this person is going to wake up in, the next day and all symptoms are free. So I know that medication is the foundation. The trick is trying to find the right one and everything like that. But we have people all the time, and, and this woman asks, is there anybody, are, do you know of any other stories like this? Well, everybody who has been psychotic at one time or another has stories like these, and so it's very, very common. Uh, but it sounds like this person is at home, and, and, and maybe uh, his, his mother's getting older, and um, you know what, maybe family members not going to take care of him, he can't take care of himself. We need to start being active about understanding our illness. Obviously the person with the illness here doesn't understand it. Now, I want to, I want to explain something here to you as well about understanding your illness. See how this, per this person thought that they were, there, there was a dolphin, you know, the, there's a dolphin and the, the sisters and the Christ and everything like that. Okay. You wonder, here's, here's how you go, you say, how can you not know that you're mentally ill? If I'm having delusions of, you know, this and that and all kinds of stories, then you say, how do I not know that I'm mentally ill? And again, remember what I said, the brain is sick, but the brain doesn't know it's sick. Not like the body, the brain at the, bo at the body, you break an arm or leg, your brain knows it's sick, it gets help. But it, that doesn't happen with, with when the brain's sick. And you say, how can you not know that you're mentally ill? Here's a couple analogies. How many times have you been in a crowd or been somewhere where there's a lot of people and somebody stinks of BO, of body odor? And, and you, we've all experienced it. And, and somebody smells, right? You smell body odor. And you look at a person and you think, oh, God. This person stinks so much. Don't they know that they, they stink? Don't, don't, doesn't this person know that he smells and has body odor? But no. No, the person doesn't. The person doesn't know that they stink. They, they can't smell it. They don't know that they stink. 
And that's an analogy, exa example. The, we don't know we're sick. The brain that doesn't know it's sick. This person doesn't know they stink. Exactly like that. Um, another example. In physical, in stroke patients, somebody who has a stroke, uh, perhaps, um, say they're, 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 they're being analyzed and they're, they're paralyzed on one side. And the doctor will say, well, can you raise your arm? Can you raise your right arm? And the person obviously had a stroke. They can't, right? The, the doctor's asking, can you raise your right arm? They can't, but they go through the motion. And, they, and then the doctor said, well, you didn't raise your arm. And they said, what do you mean I didn't raise my arm? Sure, I raised my arm. It went up. In their mind, they thought that they raised their arm. They truly 100% believed that they raised their arm. They truly believe that, but it didn't happen. Same thing, okay. Now, I want to give you one more kind of thing to think about. We hear about, um, what is it, the hand? Uh, we hear about, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. let me just try to find this here. I've made a note. Um, okay, well, we heard about non, non-criminally responsible, right? Where people, where people have, done outrageous crimes or even maybe kill people and everything like that and yet they kind of get off, they get a diagnosis and people think that they're going to the court and they're going to get off because they say they're mentally ill and everything like that. Believe me, it's very, very hard to fake that you're, that you're not criminally responsible if you do a crime. And I'm going to give you an example here. A couple, for example, when I was deep in my psychosis, when I was very, very ill, I can remember driving erratically with my car. I'd be driving around everything, and I'd be really, really driving wild and erratically. And I can remember saying to myself, God, please don't let me kill somebody. Please don't let me kill somebody. But if I thought that God wanted me to kill somebody, I would have killed somebody because that's the nature of the illness. You, you, it's so real. And so really what happens is, is, is those delusions are so real. And that's why we talk about, we talk about that people with mental illness are no longer violent or are not violent or a threat to society or anything like that if they have a mental illness. But we have to put a caveat to that. That is true if somebody is stable, if somebody is in the right mind, if they're not out of reality, if they don't have delusions. However, if somebody in the mind, if somebody is still very delusional and having thoughts and we don't know what they're thinking, they could be dangerous. Let's face it, nobody knows what's going on in the mind of somebody with a psychosis. So the fact is true that people with mental illness are less likely to be a danger to themselves or somebody else and are more likely to be a victim of crime if they're stable, if they're in reality. That's true. But when we're out of reality, nobody knows what's going on in the mind, and there could be a danger. That's why it's very important to treat. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I want to go back to the uh, not criminally responsible. You say, you know, you hear on the news, all oh, well, or you hear people in the public, oh, they'll just, uh, you know, uh, plead guilty because of insanity and everything like that. Well, I'm going to give you an example. Here's what, here's an analogy for the criteria for not criminally responsible. Here's the example, okay? Say, for example, they made a law. They made a law, universal law, that if somebody's in church, there's no swearing in church. That, you know, it's against the law to swear in church. And if you swear in church, you're going to be charged and you're going to be thrown in jail. Say there's that rule, right? Never happened, but say there's that rule. Then you get somebody that comes to church who has Tourette's syndrome, Tourette's. Now, you know, probably a lot of her Tourette's is where people just randomly swear and can't control what they say and everything like that, right? So say they're in church and all they have Tourette's syndrome and all of a sudden they're, 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 they're swearing and everything like that. And then people would say, oh, that person swore in church, it's against the law, arrest them and put them away. Well, let me ask you something. Was it really that person with Tourette's that swore? Or was it his illness that swore? You see? You got to think about that. And that's the analogy. That's the 
uh, example of that. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, so I, so I think you, you get my, 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 my point. So the, the point is that we really have to understand our illness. We got to look at it as our enemy and with education and understand and try to understand it. And for this person here that the letter that I wrote, I truly believe that they need to be treated and they need to somehow get rid of those symptoms and those delusions and get back into reality so they can start picking up the pieces of their life. Because four years of being untreated, it's not going to go away. Four years will turn into six years and six years will turn into ten years and the parents will be dead and then, and then the, the, the person with problems will be in the same situation. And this is how tragedies and homelessness start with this illness. Okay, I'm going to quit here now, uh, but once again, understanding your illness is very, very important. So um, I'm going to end there. So uh, remember, recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anyone else other than who you are today. And remember, there is life after mental illness. Have a great day. Hi, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And also be able to uh, send me your questions at bill at billmcphee.ca. As well, for more information, go to billmcphee.recoveryexpert.com. Links will be in the description below. Come back for another vlog tomorrow. And remember, recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anybody else other than who you are today. And there is life after mental illness. Have a great day.